everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good, good afternoon everyone and a very good morning for our honorable lecturer Professor Anna Jovan Chaistakik from Singidinum University Serbia. How are you Professor Anna? Good morning everyone. Salam alaikum from my side as well. I'm very well and I'm very happy and honored to be with you here today. It is my pleasure to uh, talk about the future of jobs with all of our participants. Thank you so much for your help and support. Thank you. It's nice to see you again, Professor Anna, and thank you for your kind willingness to share your knowledge with us, Professor Anna. And first of all, let us thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty because of his blessing, we are able to join in this valuable occasion. And uh, for those who are joining the light series for the first time, for, please introduce my name is Seni. And for those who have joined the previous Unicom light series, it was a pleasure to meet you again and serving as your moderator today. And ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the Unicom Light Series 3. Light is STEM for Lecture in Global Insight. This monthly event is conducted as one of our real steps to contribute in the global world and toward Unicom as the world-class university. So the topic today is about global economic trends, the future of labor market. And considering the topic is very interesting and super important to enrich your insights. So let, let's pay our best attention on the lectures. But before we go to the main agenda, I would like to read the curriculum vitae of Professor Anna. Professor Anna Jovan Chaistakik is the head of Department of International Study Programs and International Cooperation at Singidinum University, Belgrade, Serbia. She holds PhD in economics from the Faculty of International Economics, Megatrend University, Belgrade, Serbia. She has 17 years of combined experience in university teaching, academic training, community development, academic leadership, curricula design, organizational change and development, distinguished research and scholarly writing. She gained so many achievements, such as fellowship in Fulbright program, junior faculty development program awarded by the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs of the United States. She has so many published research and presented papers at international conference, her recent paper is prediction of gold price movement considering the number of infected with the COVID-19 published in the European Journal of Applied Economics in 2022. And without a further ado, let's start our lectures from her outstanding CV. There is no doubt that we will learn from the expert. Please, Professor Anna, the screen is yours. Uh, thank you, first of all, so much for this uh, lovely announcement. As I mentioned, it is a great pleasure to have the opportunity to share the knowledge and also to cooperate with such a great university as Unicom. And also, I am looking forward to more meetings and fruitful cooperation. Seni, just uh, Ms. Seni, can you just tell me, should I uh, share the screen? Should I share my presentation? Um, just one second. So, um, dear participants, as it was announced today, we will talk about an important topic that is definitely affecting all of us, regardless if you are a student, a bachelor student, master or PhD student, of course, if you are already employed or if you are planning to start your own business, if you have entrepreneurial spirit, or of course, if you are an educator. So what is going to happen and how the uh, labor market is going to transform and what are the expectations as we all know, we cannot expect for a longer period, but at least let's talk about the expectations in the upcoming years. 
So uh, today we will uh, start with um, several topics. We will talk about the global labor market characteristics in 2023. Um, we are going to talk about some trends that we can expect in labor market transformation. Of course, we cannot uh, mention uh, enough the impact of technology on industry and employment, since it is huge and it is quite important. Uh, of course, in all aspects, in all branches of the economy. And of course, at the end, we will also reflect some of the skills and the jobs for the upcoming decade, something that we should all try to develop, nurture, and of course, uh, try to adopt to what is coming. Also, um, since I am uh, teaching economics, um, I'm actually going to start with some basic terms just for all of you who are maybe not coming from this field. Um, I would like to say that uh, unemployment is much more than just an economic factor. Unemployment is something that is quite a negative tendency that affects not only the economy of a country, but actually it affects society. Uh, it affects families, it affects mental health and a lot of other things. So I believe that, as I mentioned, beyond the economic problem, Every society and every government should really take care about the level of unemployment and, of course, to develop the economy in order to provide enough jobs for everyone. The special problem that I would like to emphasize is also, also gender um, and youth unemployment. Um, the unemployment can have also very negative effects on young people. It can discourage them, it can demotivate them. And this is why I'm saying that beyond the economic, this is also a very important social problem. As we all know, economic is a social science. It is teaching us about the society, about the, the, the in general, about people. So this is why I always like to emphasize that, uh, the, that the level of unemployment and employment can tell you a lot about a certain country. First of all, the important thing when we analyze the level of employment is to, of course, differentiate the labor force and the active population. As we probably all know, not the whole population presents the active population. The active population are those who are willing and able to work. So two things, able and willing. They might be able, but not willing. And we have that a lot, especially in traditional societies where women are not um, encouraged to work, although they are able, but they rather stay home. And of course, they care about their families. Uh, and also, we have uh, people who are uh, not able, but they are willing, of course, first of all, we have uh, certain uh, limits when it comes to the age and so many other things. Um, so as we know, children and older people are not are basically allowed to work by law in majority of countries. Um, and so many other things. So when we analyze the active population, we actually can see how many of these people are actually ready to contribute. Out of these people, we are actually calculated the level of employed and unemployed. And out of that um, a part of the population, we get the employment, as you all know, it always comes in percentage. And as I said, it can tell us a lot about the state of the economy and the health, as we like to say, of the economy of one country. Um, so we have a lot of macroeconomic indicators that are actually telling us more about the, the, I like to say, the health of the economy or the state. Unemployment is, of course, one of them. And we have several types. I'm not going to go through the types right now. I'm just, not, I'm just going to say that we have two important. One is considered to be natural. There is no country in the world where we have 0% of unemployment. We always have a certain level of unemployment. It is just a matter to see if this is a natural unemployment, the one that can be absorbed by the activity of the economy or not, which is called cyclical. And that actually implies on a certain and deeper problem in the economy. Usually some economists would even go with figures. So they would say up to seven to 10% 
let's say this is natural, it can be absorbed. If it's higher than that, then it means that we have a certain problem and so on. As I mentioned, youth and gender unemployment are quite the problem within a problem. Also, if you want to know more, it is not enough only to take a look at the unemployment level. You need to analyze the structure of unemployment. So who is unemployed? Do we have more younger people, older people? What does this implicate? What should we do to solve the problem? Do we have more female or male? Do we have more people in a certain region? So maybe we can address that region and all of the important questions for the government and of course the decision makers in that field to analyze and know more and make uh, relevant decisions and politics based on that. What are the job characteristics nowadays or currently? Um, so I used, as you can see, the data from uh, International Labor Office. So the statistics are quite new. Currently, right now, we have around 473 million uh, people who are unemployed. Um, uh, want employment. Uh, so we have a job gap. 205 million of them are unemployed, uh, which means that they're actively looking for work. Um, since we are living in a highly globalized world, we know that uh, the borders of a country are not obstacles anymore. Now we have a lot of movements of workers, so it is quite normal for someone to move and to transfer based on the supply and demand of a certain job in that country. When it comes to a gender gap, which we mentioned, uh, still we do have a, quite a, a significant gender gap. Um, we have twice as many women as men are outside of the labor force. Um, so again, I'm saying outside of the labor force, I'm not saying that they're unemployed. I'm saying outside of the labor force. So still on a global level, we have present situation where women are not entering um, global market at all. So they're not looking for a job, they're deciding not to work and so on. So this is something that can also be a significant, uh, let's say, uh, indicator as well. Also young people, this is something that I would also like to mention. Uh, so we have 23.5% um, of youth who are not in education, employment, or training. Whoever is interested more in um, studying about unemployment, uh, especially youth unemployment, there is a certain term that is quite important. It is called NEET, which means that they are not in education, employment, or training. This is a significant problem. If we have a high level of uh, this type of young people, this means that Usually when we are analyzing the youth unemployment, it is quite important to know what do we consider as youth. Let's say uh, in majority of European countries, we consider young people to be until 21. So this is kind of the, the, uh, the, the highest level, uh, the higher age that we, that we consider. Of course, we know that usually these, uh, some of the students are not interested in entering labor force because they are educating and that is okay. But if they're not educating, they're not employed and they're not in the training, that means that uh, this is a resource that we are wasting, um, especially if it's a young people and definitely something needs to be done when it comes to that. And this is actually the next one is a very fascinating for me because it says about the inequality. Of course, in the economics, we need to take care about inequality as well. And then we can see that half of the workers globally earn only 8% of the global labor income. This is in general, huge inequality. It says that um, in a way the income is quite uh, focused with a smaller group of workers and that you know this is actually saying that a lot should be done to overcome this problem um, when it comes to the inequality. Um, then we have informal education as we all know this is a problem that a lot of countries are struggling with as well and trying to solve 
And as we can see also 214 million workers in extreme poverty, uh, which means that they are taking less than $1.90 um, per day, which is also in a way unacceptable. So these are kind of the things that uh, we have based on the latest um, data. Um, also, uh, I kind of prepared just a glance, of course, we cannot analyze the unemployment of G20 countries, um, which uh, basically you can see um, that uh, we have one uh, trend that we can see in all countries, and this is basically the period that we can observe in between 2020 and 2021. Of course, this is the increase in um, the um, unemployment level in mainly mainly all of the countries that we were observing, of course, caused by the COVID. Um, as we can see, some of the countries are managing quite well after. And as we can analyze, we can see, of course, that after starting from 2021, things are going back to normal. So we are talking about the period of 2022. Now we are in 2023. And basically we will talk about the expectations and we will discuss uh, just after this um is this everything that we've expected now when the COVID is officially announced uh, as uh, past or uh, and what does it mean better did we get back to the period before uh, 2020 so 2019-18 is this something that we expect or maybe we should expect more and looking for more so um, speaking about job market characteristics, we have basically four important factors that are affecting um, job market in 2023. Um, and talking about the uh, existing transformation of the market, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we cannot go past the macroeconomic factors. So the overall situation, of course, that is caused by economic, partially caused by the economic and geopolitical disturbances, especially if we're talking about the um, the, the, the prices of uh, oil, the energy in general, and so on, which is affecting tremendously countries in Europe, United States, and of course, all over the world. Uh, following with technological discoveries and the famous effect of the technology, on, on the job market and everything that is changing, jobs that are disappearing, some new are appearing. So basically, how is this shifting? We will talk about that. And of course, I would like to emphasize um, the expectations when it comes to green and energy changes. Of course, this is all kind of um, connected in a way that due to economic and geopolitical disturbances that caused the inflation, the overall inflation increase of prices in the energy sector and so on, is actually forcing us to think faster about green and energy changes. So if we thought that we have time for that, now we know that we don't. So basically we need to move forward more quickly when it comes to that. Um, also the macroeconomic factors, as I mentioned inflation, I'm gonna talk about this, are also a result of um, this, this disturbances, technological discoveries as well and so on. So um, as we mentioned, so we have a very, very interesting uh, time that we live and work and study in, most probably about uh, uh, it will be the new period to write about, to research about the previous three or four years, probably the scientists are going to write about it for the next 50 years, I would say. COVID plus the situation that is happening and everything that is happening in the market. It is quite interesting, and I, I would like even to say that probably since the Great Depression, we never had this turbulence in the uh, global market. So um, as we mentioned, economic and geopolitical instabilities um, combined with social and environmental pressures. Um, then, of course, the tensions, and we need to mention the conflict that is happening in Ukraine uh, that caused a lot of uh, problems and it came immediately after the pandemic so majority of countries did not even had a chance to recover from the pandemic we entered the new crisis um, and created uh, conditions for stagflation stagflation is probably the most unwanted situation in the economy 
this means that you have high inflation, but inflation is not caused by uh, demand, which is a good inflation, if we can say so, but it is caused by supply and costs. So on one hand, people are not earning enough to follow the increase in prices that is happening in the market due to the cost of uh, food, uh, due to the cost of the energy in the energy sector and so on. So um, it happened in 1970s with the increase of the oil prices, probably um, you remember 73, 79, when the OPEC cartel um, increased the prices of oil. So it was a huge global crisis and something similar of course is happening right now. Of course, on the other hand, we have changes in the expectations of workers, uh, consumers, uh, the urgent need for transition. Um, we even have uh, some important features that are happening basically with workers. So the COVID not only caused the problems in the economy, it caused a lot of changes in the way we work, the way we communicate. So working from home is now becoming a new normal. Um, online classes are becoming a new normal. All these things are quite important because they're changing the overall work environment, job environment, and of course, they're affecting so many other costs as well. So starting with the impact of COVID-19, although this is behind us, we cannot uh, just forget about all the causes that we are actually living even right now. Um, um, so basically, uh, as we know, it was uh, declared in 2020. Now we are in the middle of 2023. What can we conclude? Um, of course, lower, low and lower middle income countries, um, they had slower recovery from the pandemic. When we say slower recovery, we mean uh, all the macroeconomic indicator going back to normal and so on. Um, also, the projections uh, are not that optimistic. We can see that now due to new um, crisis, we will not see the full recovery uh, in the foreseeable future. Uh, who will get hit the most of these things? Um, women and young workers, as we mentioned, they're kind of already uh, in a way jeopardized, but even more due to the pandemic. And the workers with primary education are among the hardest hits in terms of unemployment. Also, um, we have some also negative projections regarding the um, going the the poverty level, the overall global poverty level. So, based on the research conducted by the UN. Um, development agency, the rising food and energy prices is expected to push up to 71 million people into poverty. So basically, and the regions that will be hit the most are Saharan Africa, Balkan region, um, and also Caspian Basin. Uh, Moving on to the macro trends, as I mentioned, um, the something that we can expect, uh, the strongest net job creation effect will be the investments that will facilitate green company transition. And this is definitely, later on we will see some graphs, this is definitely very important signal for everyone that the jobs will be created in this sector. This is based on the expectations, not only in general in the sector of the environment, but I'm talking about every company that already exists or every institution that already exists will have their own internal green company transition. So basically this is going to be quite popular topic and quite important topic for the upcoming period. So we can expect that people with this expertise and skills will be, um, it will be easier for them to of course find a job or, or to uh, help to their companies, societies, and government as well. Supply chains, as we know, they are, were hit the most uh, if we are talking about the global work in general. So uh, we are not surprised that they're becoming more localized because we've experienced the, the 
the turbulences in this sector and uh, discrepancies in this sector as well. So uh, this is also a signal where uh, uh, new jobs can be created. Um, so now, of course, the supply chains are going to be cut in a way. So there will be a possibilities for basically a lot of more localized to be developed and to, of course, cater the needs of the local market. And as we mentioned, that it has the kind of it is connected with the first one, climate change adaption and the demography. Um, it is important to know that um, in uh, Western world, uh, we have a certain demography problem, which means that we are at uh, the average age of the population is higher, uh, which means that we will have a need for caretakers, we will have the need for medical help, we will have the need for um, kind of um, uh, all these uh, jobs and all these skills uh, based on the demography and based on the following the development of the demography. Um, so also this can be and ex is expected to be one of the job creators. A uh, healthcare system and of course climate change adaptation, which is a trend for a long time. The key drivers of expected net job are predicted to be slower economic growth, supply shortages, and rising input costs. Um, which are causing, as we mentioned, the inflation. Um, also, uh, we have uh, the labor market uh, disruptions. And here we can actually see the expected impact of macro trends on jobs on 2027. Um, I just need to say that um, I used the uh, future of job reports for the data. Just wanted to give you the source. Of course, I can share this with you as well, uh, which was created recently. So the, the informations are quite recent from the World Economic Forum, uh, where a survey was conducted to over 800 hundred companies in the world. So based on the expectations, this is what we can see. And um, here you can see the list of jobs, as well as you can see which one of these field is actually going to be job creator. So which one is going to create jobs in the future and job displacer. So you can see that some of them are actually half and half, but when it comes to green transitions, as I mentioned in investments to facilitate the green transitions of the business and so on, we can see that they are the highest job creator that we expect in the upcoming period. So broader applications on environmental, social and government standards, uh, investments in green transition are definitely leading the way of the future of jobs, followed by supply, ch supply chains becoming more localized. This is going to create a lot of jobs as well. And we can see that all these percentages are more than 40. So basically, this is telling us a lot. Um, demographic, as we mentioned, in developing and emerging economies are also going to create a lot of jobs, basically. As I mentioned, in healthcare, especially care about older people. This is going to be a great need and already is in Western world, Europe, Europe uh, and but Western Europe and majority of developed countries. This is something where we have um, a, a short shortage in supply, as we can say, and it's always in demand. Climate change follows by the 43% uh, increased adoption of new and frontier technologies. So see, the technologies are not coming first, although we kind of think that there is going to be the highest level of job creation in that sector. Um, of course, we have a large percent, which is 36.4 um, and so more. So we have also consumers. I mentioned that, that they're changing the attitude. So in order to cater their needs, there is going to be a lot of new uh, jobs created. And of course, um, you can see the rest. When it comes to job displacer, the slower global economic growth is something that will cause a lot of jobs to be displaced, of course, due to the lack of demand 
of course, due to uh, not enough uh, incomes, inflations, and inflation, and so on. So this is something that we can see. Um, also here, uh, just I'm, I'm not going to uh, uh, stay along here, but uh, obviously we need to mention the inflation. The inflation is quite bad uh, because, as I mentioned, it is caused by the increase of costs. And the main two things that are causing the inflation are energy index, which you can see is going up, and of course, food price index. As you all know, uh, food is quite important determinator of our income. So basically, this is how we will, you know, when you think about, um, you know, especially if it's your first job, how high my salary should be, and so on, you will take into consideration your costs. And one of the main costs is actually food expenses. So this is quite important um, kind of uh, indicator for for the overall uh, inflation and of course for determining the overall level of in income so um we can see that uh, basically we have a global inflation of eight eight point eight percent mainly caused by these two things in 2022 i'm just going to remind you pre-pandemic level was 3.5 so we can see that there is a significant increase this means that with the amount of your salary, you cannot buy the same uh, amount of goods and services as before, unfortunately. And as you know, this is affecting the demand. Demand is affecting, the again, the demand for workers and can cause higher unemployment. So in a way, this is all kind of connected as in the economy. What is the answer, possible answer? Of course, macroeconomic policy is trying to give an answer to all these uh, problems, mainly through monetary and fiscal policy. So uh, we're, they're trying to keep the inflation under control, mainly central banks that are increasing the interest rates. Um, and this is again causing additional problem because as I mentioned, um, the uh, inflation is not driven by uh, demand. Um, and the policies are mainly focusing on demand side. So they're additionally lowering demand. So basically there needs to be a nice balance in between fiscal policy and monetary policy so that the households and the small companies can be protected in a way and preserved from the high inflation, lowering demand and everything that we can expect in the upcoming period. By the way, it is uh, expected that the inflation will hit the highest level during the summer. Um, of course, the technology, which we need to mention when we are talking about the future jobs. Uh, so everyone heard, of course, about the fourth industrial revolution and what is coming. I'm just going to mention a few things that we expect by 2025. Um, and I want you to think about these things in terms of how many people will uh, lose their job or how many people will get their job because of this. So 10% um, of people wearing clothes connected to the internet. Obviously, if the clothes is connected to the internet, then we're talking about the devices and the production. Will we need this? How? And so on. 90% of the world's population will have unlimited and free access to the internet, which gives uh, a huge power. The first robot pharmacist will be produced uh, with the certainty of 86.5%. Uh, of course, again, think about the jobs. Um, the first 3D printer car will be in production with a certainty of 84.1%. So in brackets, I have the level of certainty that this will happen by 2025. Um, then we have the first implanted mobile phone available commercially, 81.7%. Um, uh, so how this will change jobs, production, and everything. Um, globally, more trips, journeys via car sharing than in the private cars. Again, how this will affect the car industry and everyone employed. 10% of the total number of vehicles in the United States will be self-driving. Again, how this will affect, of course, the drivers, their jobs, demand, and so on. 
30% of corporate audits performed by artificial intelligence with certainty of 75.4%. I only took the certainty um, above 50%. So corporate audits, so how will this affect the market of uh, auditing, accounting, and so on? And over 50% of internet traffic to homes for uh, appliances and devices with a certain certainty. Um, more about this, I also named the source, so if whoever is interested to know more about what is coming, feel free to look at the report. I strongly suggest it is quite interesting. So the technology is coming, and by the way, we're talking about 2025, which is two years from now. So we can conclude that the times are changing extremely fast. What can we expect? Artificial intelligence is expected to lead the significant destruction. Disruption, uh, disruption to all markets and all the companies and all the branches of the economy will definitely be hit. Um, and as we can see that the uh, artificial intelligence has received particular attention and 19% of the workforce could have more uh, over 50% like uh, exchange, uh, which is of something that can be automated by artificial intelligence. Um, what is expected over the next five years, um, it is projected to be lost 83 million of jobs, 23% um, of the people, and this represents a reduction in employment of 14 million jobs or 2% global. This is quite huge. So this is something that um, is not immediately intimidating or frightening. It is just a very important signal that we should strongly follow what is coming and what is expected from us in the future. Um, as I like to say, some jobs will be uh, gone or, or uh, some jobs will be um, closed, but of course, new jobs will emerge. Um, every new feature, every new uh, uh, product of the artificial intelligence and so on will create demand for new jobs. So the basically, the something that we all need to do is focus on reskilling, focus on developing our skills in this field as well, because the job market is changing very fast and the expectations are also changing very fast. So the only way to stay in trend is of course to follow the changes. Here also we can see um, that um, some of the impact of the technology and again, what will create jobs. So we can say, see that uh, big data analytics is coming very uh, strong. 58% of the new jobs will be created or asked with this. Then we have climate change uh, technology, environmental management technologies. Again, I'm, I'm uh, asking you to pay attention on the importance of climate environment and these kind of things, because here also we can see that they're going to, these sectors are going to be one of the, uh, largest when it comes to creating new jobs. Then we have encryption and cybersecurity, followed by biotechnology, uh, agriculture technology, digital platform and apps, health and care technologies, education, uh, augmented and virtual reality, and so on. Um, and of course, we have uh, the level of job displacer and creator in robotics, in robots, humanoids, in electric. Uh, electric and autonomous vehicles. Why? Because a lot of changes and upgrades will happen there. So at the same time, we will have a large shift of jobs and need for reskill as well. Um, so the LinkedIn jobs on the rise that we can see in the latest period, it goes to uh, sales growth, customer engagement. These are in top 20s. Um, and we're talking about the period, the previous period. So now this is good for you to compare the previous period up until 2020 and the future period that we just discussed. Human resources and talent acquisitions is also going to be something that is very important. Do not think that the AI, AI uh, is going to replace everything. Actually, the creative thinking uh, is going to be and the talent 
is going to be uh, in uh, high demand because of course, the information is not that important anymore. The important thing is what are you going to be, do with information? How creative can you be? And of course, how thinking out of the box and creative thinking, your creative thinking can contribute to the further development of all this. Um, what about the skills? As I mentioned, of course, it is estimated that 50% of all employees will need to go through some sort of the training reskilling program until 2025. Um, so the, the job demand will, of course, totally change. Uh, we are not saying that the majority of jobs will disappear, but definitely using new softwares, using new apps will force all of us, as we know that we are living in era of lifelong learning, to reskill, retrain, and so on. Um, a third of essential skills in 2025 will again, of course, as we expect, consist of technological competences. So this is definitely a must. Um, and of course, uh, all the companies are aware that investing in on-the-job learning and training is most promising workforce strategy to achieve their business goals and is essential to maximizing business performance. So companies are going to invest very much, which gives a lot of space to trainers, to, uh, to professional developers, to professors, to teachers, to think about the adequate programs that will give the best results in a short period. So also we can expect the increase in that sector. When it comes to uh, skills, we see that increasing importance, uh, we can see the increasing and decreasing importance when it comes to skills, we have creating thinking coming first. As I mentioned, this is going to be extremely important. Analytical thinking as well, technological literacy. So if, you are not into that, I think this is the best time for you to start being technological literate and to follow new trends that are coming. Um, then curiosity, lifelong learning, as I mentioned, again, is a must because every day, every month, every year, we need to upgrade our knowledge and use new technologies. Resilience, extremely important in nowadays where we have this huge changes. So we see we are talking about professional, but we're also talking about personal skills. So these are both two things that we need to work on. Uh, systems thinking, AI and big data, motivation and self-awareness, quite important, talent manage management, um, service orientation, leadership, social influence, always important, um, empathy, uh, and active listening in order to understand what the clients, what the audience, what they want to give them and create exactly what they want. Resource management, network, cybersecurity, quality control. And then of course we have teaching and mentoring, we have environmental, we have programming, marketing and media and so on. And um, followed of course by some other technology driven skills. Finally, uh, what we can conclude is that transformation of jobs and skills is coming extremely fast. It will have significant impact on, on businesses that are already facing a lot of problems. So this is not only the impact of technology. The businesses are currently facing a lot of problems because of the inflation and the situation, everything that we mentioned. So this is quite challenging time. The crucial is to develop skills, as we mentioned. Um, the appropriate talent to promote growth, invest in yourself, now is the best time, follow the trends, and of course, to hope that uh, very quickly, globally, we will overcome the current problems and go back to, let's say, um, more peaceful economic times and not that many, um, let's say, movements, uh, so that basically we can focus on growth and development personal and company-wise, of course, and country and government-wise as well. 
So um, that would be all from my side for this part. Thank you for your attention. Um, I also shared my contact just in case that anyone would like to kind of consult me or know more about this topic. I would be happy to help, of course. And uh, Miss Sani, thank you so much again. Thank you, everyone. I'm now open for if you have any questions or any comments or discussion. Thank you, Professor Anna, for such an interesting uh, lectures. Uh, before we go to the question and answer, I would like to greet uh, our distinguished guests from University of West Bohemian, Dr. Thomas Kohol. Are you there, Dr. Thomas? So actually, Dr. Thomas is our keynote in the first uh, series of light. Uh, he is uh, the experts of, uh, of the creative thinking skills, Professor Anna. He is from the University of West Bohemian and he has joined our event since the, since the beginning. Hi, Dr. Thomas, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. I'm, I'm hoping that you are listening to me. Yes, I would yes, like to also true. say hello to Professor Anna. We are really close to uh, in, in Europe and I listened carefully um, uh, her, uh, her speech about the situation on the global market. I definitely agree with uh, with the result, and uh, my uh, my just point of view uh, because I'm person from a lifelong uh, learning sector. It's really necessary uh, for the future of uh, our students to keep uh, de developing our skills uh, for for future jobs market. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Have a nice day, Dr. Thomas. Yes, yeah, same to you. Thank you. Bye bye. All the best. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Uh, okay, uh, everyone. So we are come to the question and answer session. You can drop your question in the chat box or you can directly talk by pushing raise hand button. Please don't forget to mention or write your name, department, and university. We will respond to the first two questions. And after that, we will open the next question session. Everyone, please feel free to ask any question. So, uh, Professor Anna, while we are waiting uh, the participants to uh, drop their question. So, some question already sent to us by WhatsApp message. This is for, from my uh, students. Uh, so, they asked that, uh, I am interested in the topic that AI could potentially disrupt the current work situation. So uh, he said that I personally have tried using AI to do a little bit of my work and the results amaze me. Yet it made me a bit concerned about the future of my job, even though I tried it just for text translation. My question is that I have seen some companies in digital and creative industries hiring AI comment prompter. So I would like to know your opinion whether this AI comment prompter job will rise in popularity or will it just might a seasonal trend due to generative AI? The question yes, is you. from Alfi, from management department. Very good question. Actually, very good question. Thank you so much. I can see that you have uh, such a bright students that are thinking like that. Um, a lot of people are actually asking this question. And to, to be honest, nobody can give the precise answer. I can, of course, just share my personal opinion. Um, I personally believe that we are just uh, discovering, of course, the, the power and the possibilities of the artificial intelligence. And I must say in all branches, there is no um, there is no, uh, let's say, field uh, in which artificial intelligence uh, is not applied. That can be medicine, that can be pharmacy, that can be education, that can be uh, writing, so many things. So basically, it is everywhere. The thing is that this is definitely here to stay. Um, as you know, it is quite, um, in majority of cases, it is even free of charge. So, of course, you can use, you mentioned translator. Now, GPT is a huge thing. Of course, everyone is using this. You can give them different tasks. So, the question is, who will lead people anymore? What we will do, in a way? What about all the skills that we have? Can this be re replaced? As I like to say, of course, 
some things will be replaced. And uh, of course that it will push us more toward, you know, the, uh, previously the knowledge was about everything that I know. The knowledge was about information. Now the knowledge uh, and the skills are not only about the information. This is about, okay, we have this information. So what are we gonna do with it? How we are going to apply it? How, we are go how this is going to help us to create something new? So I think this is the world of creation. And for people who are curious, who are capable, as I mentioned, who are um, in a way um, ready and they have this entrepreneurial spirit, which does not mean that you need to open your own company. This only means that you want to do something in a different way. This can actually help. So um, I think that it will affect uh, mainly people and uh, young people who are not ready to work on themselves, to study more, to learn more, to push themselves further. Um, and of course, always you will need someone to supervise the artificial intelligence. As you know, um, it is based on constant improvement. So who is going to approve, who is going to improve that? It is going to be improved based on our inputs. So I think definitely um, it is here to stay. It will stay. A lot of people will use this in everyday work, in everyday life. It will affect not a job, but parts of the job. Job, it will definitely change job description. It will definitely change a lot of things. But I see that in this stage, more as a helper than as something that can disrupt. In the upcoming year, of course, there will be huge disrupt disruptions. But as I mentioned, it will create new jobs as well as it will you know, diminish some. So let's see how it will work. And of course, as long as we work on ourselves, as long as we push ourselves further um, and learn every day something new, I think uh, the things will be quite well. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, another question, uh, Professor Anna. This is for Ani from Management Department. And regarding the introduction of employment due to ever developing nature of technology, so I cannot help but be reminded that human population never ceased to grow. And that some people have a hard time adapting to the development of technology. So this phenomenon might potentially contribute to poverty. But can entrepreneurship be considered the solution to the unemployment issue in the long run? Thank you again. Actually, this is an excellent conclusion. Uh, this is one of my theses. This is one of my hypotheses that the entrepreneurship is actually a solution for unemployment. I wrote several papers on this topic. And I think it is great, especially I am happy that um, after some time we live in a time where young people are quite encouraged to do something on their own, um, regardless if it's developing app or starting some uh, business on their own and so, so on. So this is basically a way to think that um, I'm going to create a work for myself. I'm going to create a job for myself rather than relying on a company, on a government, on someone to give me the job. So I'm creating a job myself. Now with technology, this is what I mentioned. Um, the technology created so many possibilities. Now social media is creating so many possibilities for young people to develop new things, to earn to support themselves and so on. So all of these are kind of entrepreneurial um, activities. Entrepreneurship is the best thing that can happen to one society. But I believe that entrepreneurship is something that needs to be instilled in kids, starting from literally from kindergarten, um, teaching them how they should create, they should think, they should do. Uh, and then I, uh, for a while, I worked in the Middle East. I used to live there and work there. And uh, the philosophy that I like very much is that they have entrepreneurship as a mandatory course, regardless if you are studying dentistry or business, the entrepreneurship as technology can be applied anywhere. So this is a mandatory course 
to push the students to think in that way. So definitely the best, one of the best answers to solve the unemployment, especially youth unemployment, is definitely entrepreneurship. Not only that you are hiring and providing a job for yourself, but probably you will provide a job for at least a few more people, which is a great contribution. So absolutely, yes. OK. Thank you for the clear answer. And this is come from Chepi from the Department of English Literature. He asked that, will this AI emergence can be said to rapidly progress industry 4.0 to 5.0, or is it just a part of industry 4.0? Uh, to be honest, for now, I think it is only 4.0. I think we only entered the 4.0. We are still tasting 4.0. I, somehow I feel it is uh, developing faster that, than we can kind of uh, not absorb, but that we can kind of um, take. So I think that um, in a way it is, it is something that will stay. Of course, it will develop further. But to be honest, I, I think it is 4.0 for now and that we kind of need to digest that 4.0, although it is happening very fast. But uh, still, as previously mentioned, the population is growing very fast. Uh, and of course, uh, we need to think about the global population when we're thinking about these things, not only the developed countries that can actually apply all this. Still, you have a lot of countries that are not in the level to use internet, chatbots, robots. This is very far from, from, from majority of the population still. We need to be realistic. So it is coming, it is coming fast, but I would stay with the 4.0 for a couple of more years. Okay, thank you. And here we have Hanna Maura Aulia, please, Miss Hanna. Hanna. Uh, good day, I want to ask a question. Uh, what do you think about child labor, especially for influencer or celebrities? Okay, thank you. For a child labor, did I understand well? Yes? Could you please repeat? Yes. Child labor. Ch Hannah, could you please repeat the question, please? Uh, what do you think about child labor, especially for influencer or celebrities? Yeah, I think uh, I understand what you're trying to say in a way that a lot of uh, kind of celebrities and um, influencers, this, uh, who especially who have their own brands and their own uh, like companies, um, was discovered that they're uh, using child labor and uh, actually abusing, if I may say, and so mm -hmm. on. Um, I think this is wrong as uh, we are living in, of course, uh, in a civilized world, 21st century and so on. I think this is uh, extremely wrong. I think that the um, uh, there should be uh, quite uh, high level of, of um, punishment uh, for the abusers of the child, uh, of the children in general. I know that this is uh, still present, unfortunately, in uh, some uh, countries. Um, but of course, this needs to be strictly monitored. Um, we have a lot of international companies that are fighting against this and that are raising awareness about the importance of this. Um, you know, I, when it comes to celebrities and com, kind of com, bringing this, these two things in, in uh, the same context, um, I think that the cancellation culture that exists and people who are aware about bad things, including this, mm -hmm. um, is quite uh, good because you can see that uh, the followers are and the people will not follow someone who is uh, imposing wrong role models or someone who is not actually uh, following all the ethical rules that exist in creating their products. Is it a child labor or is it any other type of abuse? 
So we can see that actually people are reacting to that. But still, I think that the awareness about this problem should be continuously raised and that there should be, as I mentioned, the adequate repercussion, negative, of course, for the people who, who are, of course, uh, using child labor, which is, of course, not, not should not be um, allowed or permitted or should not happen anywhere in the world. Okay, thank you, Professor Anna. And we have next question in the chat box from Dinda from Management Study Program on ECOM. Mm -hmm. She asked you that last year we experienced the COVID-19 pandemic. Maybe until now, it still has an impact on the future and job opportunities as a society. And how do you overcome it? Uh, okay, hi, uh, Dinda, first of all. Uh, yeah, um, some things we, we will never overcome, I believe. Uh, some newly created things caused by the uh, pandemic 19. So as I mentioned, for example, um, working from home, partially working from home, I think this is becoming a new trend in some of the companies nowadays. Um, so basically you have three days home, two days go to work, go to office or so and so. We have more and more hybrid ways of teaching. So you see in companies, then you see in, high, in education in general and so on. So some things are here to say um, that also refers to job market and in general uh, the, the, the job environment. Um, also, um, the how to overcome that. Um, the thing is that the uh, actually uh, the the problem is not COVID nineteen that much as the continuation of the problem with the new one. So conflict in Ukraine that kind of immediately started after the COVID was kind of gone caused a huge problem. So we cannot now say this is only COVID nineteen. Now we have combined situation. This is why I'm saying that this is very interesting and turbulent time uh, and people are going to explore a lot about it still we do not know because in the economy you have this so-called lag effect which means you do not feel consequences immediately when something happens but you actually feel that in six months in a year and so on so we can only clearly see the consequences i think we will be able to see that in 10 years clearly absolutely now we can only guess um, so basically, uh, how to overcome that um, in the economy, I am a bit old fashioned and mm -hmm. I, I, I assume you all heard about the famous economist John Maynard Keynes, who actually helped uh, to overcome the Grand, the, 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 the grand Depression or the, the Depression crisis in, back in 1929. So if you ask me how to overcome a certain crisis, I will always go with increase the demand. Demand, the healthy demand is the only thing that can bring the economy back, create new jobs and so forth and so forth. The question is how to create demand if we are not working, if we do not have uh, salaries, how can we you know, buy? How can we create demand? Well, the answer is the government and the fiscal policy that um, in a way can, uh, in a certain way, help with this problem. Of course, uh, I know that a lot of people will have different opinion. And of course, this is quite well. But I always think that creating a demand, creating a healthy demand, creating jobs and everything is the thing that can always help with uh, going through crisis. Thank you. Very nice answer, Professor Anna. And the next question is came from Yana Mulyana from the management department. Hello, good afternoon. Good morning, maybe Professor Anna. I want to ask about what happens if the supply of labor is greater, greater than the demand of labor. Obviously, like any other market, we observe labor market as any other market. If the supply is higher than demand, then it the, the price can go down. So the salaries basically can go down. This is why in majority of countries, we do have this minimum wage that is actually preventing uh, salaries to go lower than what is the minimum stated by the government and, of course, caused by the, um, the CPI index. So basically we can uh, have the lower wages 
or we can have migrations. So it is usual, as I mentioned, that since we are living in a globalized world and, in, and, and it is quite normal for people to transfer, to move, to migrate to a places where their job is in demand. So this is why we have people like going all over the world due to demand and supply of jobs. But of course, it means unemployment and it indicates the certain problem of a country. Okay, and the next question. Hi, Professor Anna. I'm Indra Kurniawan from Postgraduate Faculty. And my question is when AI disrupts the job, the job market and the human workforce will be required to have higher creativity in order to get a job. But instead, AI makes people uncreative because they are used to relying on AI for creative jobs. Almost all jobs are assisted by AI nowadays, writing, drawing, designing, even making music. I don't understand this problem. Please enlighten me. Uh, hello, uh, Indra. I am. This is, uh, in a way, a good question, but um, I don't think I will just, of course, share my opinion. Um, I don't think that artificial intelligence is making us more creative. Creativity is something that you hold inside. It can technically help in a way to uh, prepare your creation. It cannot write for you. For example, if you want to write a story, you need to have a story in your head. So you need to give the indication, let's say, to chat GPT, what do you want? So this is still your creation. Of course, it will help, it will design, but then the idea needs to come from you. Um, the same thing happens with the design. It can help with the design. It can even do the design for you, but uh, then anyone can do that. So very soon, anyone will have quite similar design created by the artificial intelligence. So what's gonna happen? People will pay more uh, companies will pay more to those who are ready to give something different than that. Don't think that artificial intelligence is not going to be recognized. Even now, even for ChatGPT, uh, people were worried that, you know, students now are going to use this for essays. No, you can detect that. So this is what I'm telling you. The IE is creating new IE. Uh, artificial intelligence exists, but then the new thing is needs to be created. Okay, I need to check if my student used this. So let's create another software for me to check. So now I can check and I can say, I can return the essay to my student and say, okay, this is not original. This is not creative thinking. You are allowed to use the information, but you need to use it creatively. Okay, so, you know, uh, and I can check if this is used by the artificial intelligence. So in a way I see that, um, People uh, who are creative are simply going to use this as a tool to simplify the process, but still creation needs to come from them. And I like to say that creation is coming um, out of um, observing, out of empirical analysis. Um, how do we create something new? Um, we create something new by observing what people need, what is needed and not exists. This is how the best new devices and, and uh, softwares and applications were created. So you need to critically think about what is it that people need and does not exist um, and can be created and so on. So this, in a way, the idea always needs to be original. Um, and the artificial intelligence, as I mentioned, can be used only as a tool. So this is how I see that. I don't know, maybe it helped or not, but this is just my way of thinking. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Anna. This is the last question from Susi, also from uh, postgraduate students. And uh, she asked the, what is actually the major long run determinant of real wage rates, wage rates in a country? Yeah, uh, uh, the, the determinant is actually, or should be the level of prices. 
um, and uh, it should be in a way now currently we have a great struggle with the wages uh, because in uh, majority of fields companies uh, wages cannot follow the inflation um, the inflation is increasing much uh, faster uh, than the wages can follow. And this is, again, affecting the demand, the lowering of demand and so on. Um, in some cases, we have companies that are not uh, actually uh, running their activities on the desired level, so they cannot increase the salaries. Um, we have some others. So we have, in general, we have big struggle in between workers, companies, and what is happening nowadays. So this is affecting anyone, but in the long term, in the long term, it should be, as I mentioned, the two prices, the food uh, index, uh, and of course, the, uh, the energy index. So these are kind of the two um, major determinants of the inflation, and also it should be about the wages that is upcoming in the future. So one will follow the another, definitely, so we will need to observe both. So thank you very much. Thank you for such a wonderful discussion. So uh, unfortunately, uh, we have to end our session due to limited time. But before closing, I would like to give opportunities to Professor Anna to give his piece of advice, maybe to encouraging our students. Please, Professor Anna. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, the big changes are coming, but you should not be afraid. I think you should simply continue working on yourself. You're in the right place at the great university. Continue acquiring knowledge, practice, be curious, observe the world, observe what the world needs. Always stay in the international context because besides of only focusing on your national, you need to see what uh, changes are happening in the world. So follow the international context, work on yourself, use every opportunity to develop your skills, every opportunity, do volunteering, do practical work, internships, it will give you your young, you need to gain as much as experience as needed. Work on your social skills, work on your creativity, work on your critical skills. As I mentioned, be curious, this is important thing work on your presentation skills um, and develop yourself every day because definitely that will pay very high uh, dividend in the future, uh, that investment in you. So keep investing in yourself, keep learning something new every day and I'm sure that the future will be quite bright for you. Well, thank you for such encouraging advice. So if I, uh, if I can the conclude the presentation today is skill anticipation is a strategic and systematic process through which labor market actors identify and prepare to meet future skills needs, thus helping to avoid potential gaps between skills demand and supply. So thank you uh, everyone for very uh, good attention. So hopefully the presentation will give benefit for us. Thank you for uh, your kind attention. Once again, see you later on Unicom Light Series 4. Thank you, Professor Anna. Have a nice Thank day. Thank you so much. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.